Hmm. of our preparation for total consecration according to the spirit of St. Maximilian Kolbe. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Day 7. Mary, the Mediatrix of all grace. No participation in grace and divine nature is possible without the motherly mediation of the Immaculate. The fullness of grace which God has placed in her Immaculate soul is a source of grace for all the rest of His children. In His infinite wisdom, He does not transmit His divine life to you except through her. You, therefore, cannot have the life of God in your soul unless you also have the life of Mary. You cannot have God for Father unless you have Mary for Mother. God does not give a single grace without her. There is no fruit of grace in the history of salvation that does not have as its necessary instrument the mediation of Our Lady. How great are the wisdom and mercy revealed in this design of God! The most gentle and loving Mary is truly your mediatrix with God. Whatever God wishes to give you, He first inspires your mother to ask it of Him. And only then is the grace given through her motherly hands and heart. This truth was understood from the beginning and accepted with the greatest joy by the holy apostles and earliest believers. It was also the belief and teaching of the fathers of the church. All the Christian peoples of every age accepted it, and it is only by the greatest violence and with the most tragic of consequences that this consoling truth can be uprooted from their hearts. As the history of so many heresies against the faith of the Church shows us, it is a truth so important for your soul and for its growth in grace that the whole Church, and especially the Holy Pontiffs, has repeated it countless times and with infallible certainty. Our Lady's mediation is truly universal. Even when you are unaware of it or cannot remember it, Our Lady is always interceding for you for every grace you receive. God, however, does not want you to be unaware or unmindful of having such a loving mother and mediatrix. He wants you to honor your father and your mother. For this reason, there are certain graces He has prepared for you that you cannot receive unless you think of her and pray to her expressly. There are certain graces which you cannot receive unless you ask for them explicitly through the Immaculate. Think about this profound truth and see that it is contained in the Gospel itself. If Our Lady had not been there at Cana in Galilee, Jesus would not have worked His first miracle. Had the spouses not invited her to their wedding feast, she would not have obtained this grace from them. This miracle occurred because she was invited, because she interceded, because she spoke to the servants, and because they obeyed her, and only because she was present and asked for it. Did our Lord anticipate His hour? If you wish to receive the fullness of grace that God has prepared for you from eternity, consecrate yourself to your Heavenly Mother. Invite her and take her into your home, into your life. Pray to her. Let her intercede for you. Obey her and let her surprise you with her motherly love. Let us now turn to page 79 for our daily prayers. If you can, please kneel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Act of Adoration of the Most Holy Trinity I adore you, our Heavenly Father, because you have deigned to place in the most pure womb of Mary your only begotten Son. I adore you, O Son of God, because you condescended to enter the womb of Mary and became truly her actual Son. I adore you, O Holy Spirit, because you deigned to form in her immaculate womb the body of the Son of God. I adore you, O Most Holy Trinity, O One God in the Holy Trinity, for having exalted the Immaculate in such a divine way. 
and I will never cease daily from the first moment I awake to adore you most humbly, O Divine Trinity, with my face to the ground, repeating three times. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Salutation of the Blessed Virgin by St. Francis of Assisi. Hail, O Lady, Holy Queen, Holy Mother of God. You are the Virgin made church and the one chosen by the Most Holy Father in heaven, whom he consecrated with his Most Holy Beloved Son and with the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, with whom there was and is all the fullness of grace and every good. Hail his palace, hail his tabernacle, hail his home, hail his robe, hail his servant, hail his mother, and hail all you holy virtues which through the grace and light of the Holy Spirit are poured into the hearts of the faithful so that from their faithless state you may make them faithful to God. O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you, and for all who do not have recourse to you, especially for the enemies of the Holy Church and those recommended to you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that concludes our preparation for day seven. In today's readings, we discuss something very important, Mary, the mediatrix of all grace. It is so important that we understand what this means. So a grace is a gift from God for our salvation. That grace incarnate is Jesus Christ. Grace comes to us from God through Mary. Jesus entered this world from God through Mary. And so Mary is the mediatrix of all grace. Any time that God answers a prayer, whether that's for a conversion, whether that's for a cure, whether that's for strength to avoid a temptation and to do a virtuous act, those graces, all of them, come to you from the hands of the Virgin Mary. This is critically important to understand. We'll discuss tomorrow the benefits of recognizing Mary as the mediatrix of all grace, but right now we really have to understand how this works. So there's something called actual grace. Actual grace, according to the theologians and according to the church, is the grace that God gives you in the present moment to do His will. Oftentimes we are preoccupied with the future. We hang on to wounds and failures of the past, but we have to grasp the future and the past does not exist. That is only in our imagination. The only thing that exists is the present moment. Doctor of the Church, St. Therese of Lesseux, said she does everything in her power to leave the past to God's mercy and leave the future to God's providence because if she didn't, she wouldn't have any peace of soul. All that exists is the present moment. God gives you grace, actual grace, in the present moment to know His will right now and to do His will right now. And if you do God's will in the present moment, the future will take care of itself. So for example, let's say you are a student. You have a major exam coming up in five days. You could be worried and stressed and anxious in constantly thinking about that future exam that's going to happen in five days. But then if you do that, you will ruin the present moment. Am I saying don't study? Am I saying don't prepare? Absolutely not. In the moment when it is the will of God that you study and you prepare, you study and you prepare. But you are not anxious about the future because anxiety does not add anything to you. And you have to grasp, God's grace only applies to this present moment. He cannot apply grace to the hypothetical situation that exists in your mind. 
So often, because of our imaginations, we can throw ourselves into a frenzy, we can throw ourselves into desolation and into despair and into anxiety because of our fear and our worrying about the future. This shows a lack of confidence in God. This shows a lack of prudence in our part because we're wasting God's grace right here, right now. And experience shows us that when we focus on God's will in the present moment, that the future takes care of itself, the things that we've worried about for days and for weeks and even for years never actually come to pass in the way that we imagined them. So I want you to gain one thing so far. Focus on right now. If a worry about the future comes, shut it out of your mind. Say, God, I leave it to your divine providence. This is an act of faith. Confide, confidence is an act of faith that God loves me and God's going to take care of me. But this really has more to do with your consecration to the Virgin Mary. Why? It is God's will that she give you every grace in the moment at every single moment. So if Mary's role is the mediatrix of all grace and God gives you actual grace at every single moment, that means the Virgin Mary is so attentive to your soul, words cannot even express it. Our Lady, at every single moment, not only is she looking at you because of her role as your mother, and she has to fulfill that role perfectly, according to St. Alphonsus, doctor of the church, but she has the role as mediatrix of every single grace that you receive at every single moment. That means her eyes are never, never, never anywhere but on you. She's looking at you. She knows every blood cell in your body. She knows every thought that you have. She knows every hair on your head. She has to in order to fulfill her role as mediatrix of all grace. So if we're going to be consecrated to Mary, we have two things to keep in mind. Number one, confidence in her, confidence in the Immaculate. She's going to provide us what we need if we ask it. The second thing I need to keep in mind is that she's present. She's so present to me. Simply making an act of faith in her presence changes my chemistry, changes the dynamic in the room, changes the flow of grace into my life. Making an act of faith in the presence of the Virgin Mary is going to be critical when you pray. It's going to be critical when you're tempted. It's going to be critical when you need to make an act of virtue. I really want to hammer home with this first little part on Mary's role of mediatrix of all grace that I should have utmost confidence in her. She's always watching me. She's always with me. Tomorrow we'll discuss some of the other benefits of having Mary as mediatrix of all grace and being totally consecrated to her. God bless you. God love you. And we will see you tomorrow.